we are going to walk through the creation of a nifty little panel of asset return data uh, from within Stata using the get symbols command. Uh, then we'll also uh, merge that with some macro data uh, from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. So in the end, we'll have a kind of a capital asset pricing model framework uh, in a panel kind of ready to use a fixed effects, random effects approach. So actually, we're going to jump to uh, the macro data part first, so we just have that ready to go. Uh, so we've got an empty state of frame here, so we'll use the Fred use command, and let's say we'll get our industrial production. All right, so Fred use end pro, so this will be monthly industrial production index for the U.S. Now what we're going to do is create a our asset return panel in monthly observation starting in January 2015. So our first step is to uh, pare down this data set so its first observation is January uh, 2015. So let's go ahead and generate a little kind of counter or time variable here so we don't have to deal with uh, date. All we're trying to do is again pare down the data set. So let's generate a variable called obs equal to underscore n. And I know there's more elegant ways to do this as with everything else. Uh, but we see we have our observation starting at 1 all the way to the end of the sample. Our data here starts in 1919, so we're going to go all the way down, do, 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 looking for 2015 January. Here we go. So 1153 is the cutoff. So let's go ahead and drop if OBS is less than 1153. And we can go ahead and drop that variable. And now this step is important. So when we're merging data sets, we have to have a common variable uh, matching the two. Uh, so let's go ahead and generate a variable, call it time, equal to underscore in. So now we browse our data. And again, it's exactly the same as our obs variable. Uh, but now observation one is the beginning of our new pared down sample. January 2015. So let's go ahead and save our newly created data set here. Let's call it inpro underscore ts, so industrial production time series. And we'll know where to get that. And now let's clear this out. And now we're going to use this uh, command get symbols which does exactly that. So it uh, scrapes asset price, asset return, asset trading volume, ticker symbol by ticker symbol. Uh, we can get it directly from Yahoo Finance or other sources. So in this little example, let's say we're going to get the S&P 500. So we go caret GSPC, and then I'll get a few banks. So E-Trade, Bank of America, and Citibank. And we want to begin this in 2015. So let's go first year 2015. We want frequency monthly. And we'll get this from Yahoo. And with this next little command, we can uh, get not only the adjusted close price, but also the returns already calculated. So we don't have to do that step. Uh, so we're going to get for the price. We want the adjusted close. And now we hit enter and we wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Price adjust close. All right, I didn't like that. Let's try that again. And did you know that on a Mac, function up arrow brings up the most recent command. So, sorry about that, we don't need to spell out. So, A-D-J-C-O-O-S-E. And there we go. So, for each of our assets, including the S&P 500 index, we get the adjusted close price. 
the continuously compounded return and the simple return and the trade volume. And to get these should be monthly observations. So let's go ahead and browse, let's see what we've got here. Okay, so 2015 month one, month two, price, return, return, volume, price, return, return, volume. So we have all of these separate time series across all of our assets. And what we want to do is be able to stack those on top of each other, right? Essentially turn this into a long form panel. So in Stata, we're going to use the reshape command. Okay. Uh, before we do that, uh, a couple things we can do. We've got more, more variables than we need here. Uh, let's say for the purposes of, of this exercise, we're just going to use one version of the return. So we don't need the price. Let's get rid of the continuously compounded return and just keep simple return and volume for each asset. So let's get rid of price, return, price, little r return, price, and little r return. So we're going to drop all of those. And now this next step is also very important. So in order to stack each of these individual time series on top of each other, they all have to have a common name, right? So we're just going to have a name, call it return, that's observed firm by firm, period by period. So we're going to have to do a little rename convention here. And we can rename these in groups. So we're going to rename all of the returns. Oh, sorry. We're going to leave out the S&P from this little exercise. We're just going to use the individual returns because those are all going to be a function of S&P return. So we collect up the three returns, E-Trade, Bank of America, and Citicorp. And we're going to rename them respectively R1, R2, and R3. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with R3 volume. So again, skip over S&P. E-Trade, Bank America, Citicorp. And we're going to call these volumes V1, V2, V3. So it's going to be important that we, we remember the, the order in which we're doing this, which code 1, 2, 3 belongs to which firm in this case. And let's try that again. Sorry about that. Got to collect those up in parentheses. Okay, so now let's go ahead and generate a time variable. So we're going to use the same name that we have in the data set that we're going to merge with. So generate time equals underscore little n. So that's going to be right starting in that same point, month 1, 2015. And now we're going to use this reshape command. So we're going to go reshape long. And the variables we're going to reshape are going to be the return and the volume, so R and V. And here we have to do a little bit of creativity here. Uh, we have to tell Stata which kind of variable is going to be organizing our data. Right. So the way we have it set up, what Stata is going to think is the kind of the clustering uh, individual level variable I is really our time variable. And we're going to create a new variable called code uh, that's actually going to be our cross-sectional identifier. Right? So we go reshape long and then the variable names R and V. So that's going to collect up R1, R2, R3 into one variable called R, V1, V2, V3 into one variable called V. Okay, so let's give that a shot. That all looks good. Let's browse that data. Ah. Sorry about that. Before we can make sense of that, let's sort the data. So let's sort by firm, code, and time period, time, and then browse that. So here, code number one is our E-Trade starting month one, 2015. Here's the volume, and then here's the return the next period. Sorry. Here is return for our individual code one. Here is the S&P return, right? And here's code one E-Trade volume. 
So keep an eye on this number, right, the 054. So let's go down. So we see code 1, period, all the way up through 59. And then we start over again. Right? So here is code 2, period 1. And here's the same value. Right? So it's just repeated over and over again. Each firm is referencing that same market return, S&P return. And then here, code 2, right? that was our Bank of America. There's Bank of America return in period 2, the first observation. And here's Bank of America trade volume. Go all the way down, observation 59. Start again. Same value for the S&P. Now it's Citibank return Citibank volume. Right? And then if we had more firms, they would all be stacked underneath. Right? So now, the last step, the merge, we want to add a new column here that's going to act a lot like our S&P return and S&P volume. So it's going to be right, tracking how individual returns respond to macro influence. So we're going to have our industrial production month by month here for firm one, and it's going to be the same for firm two, etc. So our next step here is we're going to go up to data, combine data sets, merge two data sets, and we're going to choose the option here so we can go one to one, many to one, one to many. So many to one, because we have multiple firms in our open data set that's going to key into each, each period, each time period in the new data set. So our, sorry, I was just practicing, so it's already filled out. Uh, the key variable is going to be our time variable. And then we got to go find our data set that we saved. So we call that that inpro ts. And let's select that. We go OK. And we have some observations that were not matched. Let's see if we can figure out what happened there. So let's sort again by code and time. And let's browse. So here's all of our new information from the Fed. And let's scroll back up. So time period one, code one, 2015, January. There's the associated industrial production. Now if we scroll down, we can see kind of what happened here. Our asset return has the most recent observation. So in this case, when I'm doing it right now, November uh, 2019, we have November, we have October. That data hasn't been released yet for industrial production. So those are missing observations. So they were not matched. So if we use our industrial production here in a, in a regression, we're going to lose two observations for every firm, in this case, three firms, so six observations. But we see what happens here. So our, that industrial production starts over again for firm two, and so on and so forth. So now in order to use our panel data uh, techniques in Stata, right, we have to use our XT set command. So it's XT set IT. So in this case, it's code and time. And now we can go ahead and run, say, a fixed effects or random effects regression. So it's going to be individual firm return as a function, say, of individual firm trade volume. And then market return, market trade volume, and industrial production. What? Sorry. That was not supposed to be XT set, that's supposed to be XT regress. There we go. And now we can start to make some interpretations. Obviously, we'd like to have a, a data set with more firms in it, but this is going to be a good start. All right, so hopefully that helps you get started. And let me know if you have any questions.